What's up, dude? If you've been walking around in life thinking mashed potatoes are as good as it gets, oh, well then you're in for a very tasty awakening because today I'm gonna show you three show-stopping potato recipes that are guaranteed to put a smile on anyone's face. Now let's go! The first potato recipe on our list is near and dear to my heart because I spent so many years in restaurants making this dish over and over again. It is fondant potatoes. For these, I'm starting with some russet potatoes. And of course, the first thing you wanna do, just peel them up. And you have a few different options when it comes to making these. For both options, you wanna start by trimming both ends just a little bit. And you don't want them too thick, you don't want them too thin. They are on the thicker side, about two inches. So I'm cutting them just about like this. And if you wanna get real fancy with it, you can always take a ring cutter, these little ring molds, find the right size. And what you would do then is just push, uh, 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 punch it out like so. And that will give you that nice little uniform shape. Although I don't like doing this. For me, it's just a waste of all that potato. And I don't really care that much about this shape, all right? What I might do is literally just with my knife a little bit, just kind of make it a little bit more round, something like that. It honestly doesn't need to be perfect. Sometimes I won't even do that at all. And as soon as you cut your potato, drop it in some water, get a little bit of that excess starch off. Another way you could shape the potato a little more is just by peeling it down in those sections where it's bulging out a little bit. This will definitely give you a more uniform look than the knife, but to each their own, whatever you want to do, you can do. Again, what's most important here is that they're all the same thickness. I can even take one of my previously cut potatoes just like this so I can measure them out. That will help out a lot. Lot. Boom, that's it. It's as simple as that. Grab these potatoes back out of the water and just put them onto a paper towel here to dry off. Giving them a little rinse like that should help them to get a little bit more even browning. Just make sure they're really dry on this step because the next step involves hot oil. Let me do something sick. Unsalted butter. Caught three of them, uh, caught three. Small. Starting with a pan here on medium high heat. I'm adding some neutral oil, that's avocado oil, high smoke point, decent amount, decent amount. Now be careful when you do this potatoes in. After about five minutes when they have a light golden brown sear, we're gonna give them a flip. Be really careful with these. Oil's not messing around. As this process goes on, they're gonna get a lot darker and beautiful looking, but for now, this is good. And now I'm throwing in some crushed garlic. Remember, fat carries flavor, right? The oil and the butter is the fat. And these little aromatics are really gonna flavor that fat. That was pearl onion. And now watch, stick of butter, stick of butter, stick of butter, stick of butter, stick of butter. Another stick of butter. Six sticks of butter. Six oh, Makes the medicine not work. When I make fondant potatoes, I'm going for an untraditional all butter method. The traditional method is using stock and then it gets baked in the oven along with the butter. Although the straight butter version is just so good and you can reuse this butter as well, so don't worry about that. For now, you just wanna let it melt. At this point, I'm gonna hit that other side with a little bit of rosemary salt, homemade seasoning we make here on the channel. I'll put a link to that recipe and video down in the description. Just let it start seeping in. You can always season these more at the end. I just like doing a little bit right now. Oh, look at that. Isn't that delicious? Marcus, can we get some sexy B-roll of that bubbling away, man? Yeah. And so what you wanna do now is turn that heat down to medium low, even closer to low will do. And what's gonna happen as this cooks is that butter is gonna brown and get that beautiful dark nutty aroma, which will then infuse into the potato. With this all butter method, we keep it on the stove and turn them every 15 minutes. And as you can see here, as they cook, they get more and more and more and more freaking beautiful. So after four flips and a total of one hour and 15 minutes, these fondant potatoes are complete. I just used one of these little cake testers. It just slides right in, nice and buttery, literally. And during the last 15 minutes, I put in a couple sprigs of fresh thyme just to give that little floral pop. Oh man, these look pretty darn good to me. Time to get these out of the butter. Don't want to leave them in there. Butter's done its job. Oh my God. I can't tell you how good it smells in here right now. It's insane. Again, this butter, I'm just going to pass it through a strainer and just use it for general cooking. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's even better. It's like super butter now. Gonna hit them with a little bit more salt right before serving, because why not? And Marcus, come on down, dude. Let's try this thing. Who's got the forks? You got our forks? All right. I got the forks. Give it a slice. Give it a slice. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Fondant potato. It's hot. Oh, you're going handheld? Mm. That's crazy. Mmm. Toe Some more salt if you want. I'm a salty bitch. It's hot, dude. Be careful. I can handle it because I'm fireproof. You not so much, you know? You no, me there. not. Me not so much. Oh, the garlic. Dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a potato cooked in butter. What What do you need to know? 
Wait, how do you think it is? Delicious. If you've never butter, tried potato, these, salt. butter, potato, salt. Butter, potato, salt. Butter, potato, salt. Hey, let's give a description. Butter, potato, salt. That's what that is. It's so good. Damn. Make this. Before we cook our next recipe, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Made in Cookware. I've been using their products for years now and their nonstick pans are some of my favorites. And you don't have to just take my advice for it. There are three Michelin star restaurants out there like Alinea in Chicago and La Bernadine in New York City that exclusively use these pans. I really love what Made in Cookware is doing because they're designing professional quality cookware for you, the home cook. And for the price, I really do believe these pans will give you the best bang for your buck. Made in's performance nonstick collection is made in America as well as abroad in Italy. The nonstick surface is seriously amazing. It's double cured, and I can assure you it will be one of the best nonstick surfaces you ever cook on. So underneath that first layer of nonstick surface, Maiden uses their five-ply stainless steel technology. This means that your nonstick pan will heat up evenly and quickly, and will give you that perfect sear or char on your proteins or veggies. Another great thing about Maiden Cookware's nonstick collection is they can go straight from a stovetop into a really hot oven up to 500 degrees. They're insanely easy to clean. A lot of times I'll just wipe them out with a paper Paper towel and they're ready to go for my next use. Check out their nonstick collection as well as Maiden's other cookware by clicking the link down in the description to save on your order. Thanks you so much Maiden for sponsoring this video. I am proud to have you. Now let's get back to these recipes. The second potato on our list is a serious game changer. If you've never made smashed potatoes, now is your time. To start, you're gonna need some boiling water and we're gonna season it up with salt here, about a tablespoon, bam, straight in. For this recipe, you need fingerling or baby potatoes. Here I have a mix. In they go. Let these simmer away and when they're perfectly fork tender meaning you can pierce them with a thin piece of metal and it slides in easily they are ready for the next step there we go 22 minutes until fork tender let's just get them out into a bowl let them steam here for a second now I first hit them with a little bit of olive oil just to coat them up and at the same time I'm gonna season them up here with some more of that homemade rosemary salt if you know you know you can always just use regular salt no problem as well as a little bit of sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty my spicy little friend mustache rub Ugh, dude, his mustache stinks. Next, I'm just taking a sheet pan, gonna hit it with some more olive oil. Dump your potatoes out, and then here we go, one by one. You can smash them with literally anything. I'm using a little burger smasher here, just oiled up so that potato doesn't stick. And we're gonna smash, just check it out. You don't wanna smash too much and not too little. Something just like that should be good. Smash again, smash again. The amount of textures you get from these smashed potatoes is awesome. Once they're all rough smashed, just place them directly into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. After 20 minutes, remove them from from the oven. And at this point, I'm gonna flip them over. Getting that brown, little crunchies already. Woo! These potatoes were a little drier, so they broke up into some more pieces, but honestly, it's totally fine. They're getting so crunchy. This, I'm, I'm drooling. I'm drooling, folks. Now for the next step, we're gonna be adding a little bit of butter. Usually I just use, you know, butter from the fridge, but since I have these fondant potatoes cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add that brown nutty butter. Oh, and I'm also adding some fresh garlic right now just to eat it with this, why not? Okay, it's nicely buttered. It up. Now we're gonna return it to the oven one final time to crisp up again on that other side. Woo! Another 20, 25 minutes and we have crispy potatoes. That's what we want. I actually don't have a convection oven. I'm ashamed to kind of say, but if you're using convection, meaning fan on, it could be a lot quicker. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're crispy, my friends. Oh, oh, they're so crispy. Let's get these off onto a serving tray. My God, they look so so good, my mouth is just salivating. Oh Lord. Let me get the mic close so you guys can just. Woo! I'm almost more excited about these than the fondants. Although those were insane. A little bit of finishing salt, that's just Malden salt. By building these layers of seasoning, you end up with the perfect bite. The salt in the water, the salt right before you roast them, and the salt after, ooh, nice. I'll put a link to a recipe for garlic mayonnaise down in the description. If you make that to go along with these, you're gonna be one happy camper. Looking much taller. Which one you going for, dude? Um, I'm, I will choose one for Marcus. I have the I have the best taste. This one is for you. And that's I did, I did him a solid there. That one is really good. I wanted it real bad. He chose the one I wanted. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. I'm going for Max Chris Deliciousness, which is a culinary term. Wow. So many textures. Try that. It's got a different kind of crunch. Reds and purples are my favorite. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh, the regs. Marcus, the regs. Regs are usually never that good. Oh. You get the crunch, you get that creamy inside. 
Awesome, make it. Our third and final potato recipe of the day is palm anna potatoes. Trust me when I say this is something you wanna learn. By the looks of it, it may seem a little bit intimidating, but trust me, it is easier than you think. Start by peeling up your russet potatoes. You could definitely use a knife if you don't have a mandolin, but a mandolin is gonna get you extremely precise, consistent cuts. I recommend this one all the time. People are never disappointed with it. I will put a link for that in the description. Be really careful when you're using one. I will use the guard when I get closer to the bottom. And I'm doing some slices first. You want them not too thick, not too thin. A lot of the times I'll see people go too thin with these. I want them to be a little bit thick. I'm gonna go a tiny bit thinner than this. Once I get to the end, I'm definitely using the guard. Just keep slicing. And try to keep those slices sort of roughly stacked and then set them off to the side. Usually you would melt some butter in this pan, but seeing as how I just cooked my confit potatoes, fondant potatoes, kind of similar. I'm gonna use that same butter, that liquid gold. Look at it, look at that. I bet I could get Marcus to drink this whole thing. I'll do it. Don't do it, you will die, you will die. Take a sip. Nice layer of butter on the bottom and we're gonna put in some sprigs of thyme just all around. Now we're gonna take a potato in the middle and then we're gonna start layering around one circle like this. That's your inner circle. Then we're gonna make another layer around that. And then if you have the room for it, another layer around that. And so your first layer should end up looking like this. Now a little sprinkle of salt. Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty back in action. Pepper, next step is optional but very good. Parmesan cheese, you don't have to put it. I don't think it's really traditional in palm and potatoes, but come on man. It's gonna be the glue that holds this all together, the tasty, delicious Italian glue. All you gotta do now is repeat step one and do another layer of potatoes, inner layer, number two. Don't think about it too much. It's all gonna work out in the end. It always does. Keep those layers coming, coming, keep on coming. Again, with the salt, pepper, and parmigiano. And just repeat this process with all of your potatoes. Three to four layers will be ideal. You could even do two, though, if you want. In the end, I only did three layers, and I'm just putting salt and pepper on that last layer. No parmesan on this one. Now, before proceeding, we need to make a little parchment lid, starting with a square piece of parchment. We're just gonna fold it up into a smaller square. From here, we're just gonna fold it from one corner across like this almost like you're making a little paper airplane. Then you wanna hold that tip around the middle and see where the edge is, meaning the edge of the pan, and just slice there. Just take off a tiny little piece of the tip. Now you can unfold it, and it should be the right size for your potatoes. Now I'm just gonna push down a little bit on these potatoes, and we're gonna turn this pan onto high heat, and we're gonna let it cook until that bottom side of the potato starts to brown. It can take anywhere from five to eight minutes. This has been going for about six minutes. You can see it really bubbly around the edges, sizzling away. Pop a lid on it, straight into a 400 degree oven. 30 minutes later, you wanna take off the lid and remove the parchment paper as well. Now it's gonna go back into the oven for about 15 minutes. And there we are, my friends, another 15 minutes. You can see how it's gone beautiful and brown and crispy around the outside. Did we nail it? We have to flip it out to find out. Just gonna make sure all the edges are loose first. Looks really good, this made in nonstick cookware. It's not messing around. Plate on top, all we're gonna do, whoop. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh! If we're on fire today, Marcus. That worked out incredibly well. It looks so cool with the time stamped on it. I know I'm using a knife on the plate. I know, guys, I know. He knows. But you know what? Comment about it anyway. Oh, oh, ah, it's really hot. We're gonna touch that. We can't even hold it. I can. I can too. It doesn't hurt me. Cheers. little crunchy edges. Mmm. This one might be my favorite. The crunch and the cheese. Oh my God. That's ridiculous. Honestly, all three recipes are just, they're baller. Thank you for watching today, my friend. I hope you're ready to try out some of these potato recipes around the holidays. There will be links down in the description to a lot of my favorite tools and equipment I use on this channel, as well as my new master in the making ebook with 55 of my favorite recipes. And if you want to keep learning today, here are two more potato recipes that I think you're going to love. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth.